now we're into the combs I left see that's full frame of honey almost full they're just starting to cap that another full frame another full frame of honey another and another and here's about a half a frame well three quarters maybe going on everybody I'm back again for another one today we're back at the that abandoned farm field that was had was just loaded with wildflowers it was in one of my videos the video is titled moving more bees and more wildflowers so if you want to go check that out we're at this same spot and today is July 10th haven't recorded in a while so we're kind of jumping forward in time a little bit been a little crazy and busy and stuff like that not really dealing with other stuff not really having time for videos so just been uh, in the meantime I've been selling a few nukes for my first time uh, been <clears throat> kind of checking up on the production hives seeing how they were doing uh, been dealing with new nukes got another round kind of coming up I need to check them for laying queens just all kinds of beekeeping stuff but today we're back here at this location because we're getting ready to harvest some honey and I'm in desperate need of it actually because I try to sell my wife and I set up a tent in a little booth every weekend to sell honey and right now is the time for farmers markets we go every every Saturday and I'm on my last leg of cotton blossom honey so if y'all are kind of unfamiliar with how I've been running things. I try to make wildflower honey this time of year in the spring and then come up here pretty quick. I usually move them to cotton fields and make some cotton honey. Usually extract it in September, beginning of October. And last year's crop hadn't lasted as long because I've been selling more of it and kind of building the business up. And I literally have probably less than, I don't know, I may have 60 pounds left that's bottled up and ready to sell, but I have none in the tank ready to be bottled, nothing. So we could probably have a light week this week at the market, but I'd rather get some wildflower honey extracted so I can make the most amount of money as I can. And people are... People really love the wildflower. That's what they're really looking for. So I'm really wanting to have that available for everybody. So what we're doing today is actually setting the skateboards. If y'all aren't familiar, that's what this little layer right here, here is. It's its own separate piece of equipment. So like right now, this one right here we're looking at is three boxes high. This bottom one is the brood chamber. That's where the queen's gonna be and she's gonna be laying her eggs and having all of her brood down in here. Right here in between these two boxes is a queen excluder. That's gonna keep the queen down in here. And before I turn the camera on, anything above this, above the queen excluder was a honey super. And like this hive here had one one box as a super and what i've done is i've brought 
honey boxes with me to replace what I'm taking away. And what that does is it leaves that same amount of spe space for the bees to filter down back into. And that way I'm not trying to cram them all down into one box. So these are honey boxes that I brought with me. They're gonna be their winter feed. And above that I put an escape board. And then this is the honey box that was there before I turned the camera on. So I'll be taking one box from that colony. As you can see on them, I'm taking one full box and then that second one's partial. We'll get into that later. Same over there. This single here swarmed and they were unsuccessful in requeening themselves and now they're a laying worker so I'm going to be bringing one of my nukes over here and popping it in there. So like that was a that's a partial super and the one down below it's full. I'm trying to spread the honey out across all the colonies so the bees clear out of there maybe a little easier but like these will have all nine extractable frames I've already gone through most of the yard I have one I have three more to go through I figured I'd save that for you guys So it wasn't a, wasn't a great wildflower year production wise. I think there, the potential was there, but just didn't capitalize fully. A few reasons. We've had a tremendous amount of rain. We've been pretty wet, which is good, but I think it was a little bit too much. We had a lot of cloudy, cool days a lot of cloudy days I think that really hurt and then I think that contributed to a little bit of swarming and once the colony swarms there goes your honey crop and your potential to make a honey crop so the clouds really mess with me I think I really think I had the colony set up really well to go into a honey flow if it had been sunny, good foraging weather. But when you get those cloudy days and cool days, it keeps those bees confined into the box. And they, you know, they can feel congested and then they, you know, want to swarm. But if you have good foraging weather, like I was hoping for, you know, and that honey flow hits them hard, which I think it was going to, then they'll go into honey mode or hoarding mode and they'll kind of forget about swarming as long as you keep space on them. But, you know, you got to account for that. I could have, maybe there's some things I could have done, but I know I lost a good amount to swarms. So, anyhow, I saved these last three for you guys to see. And here's an escape board if some of y'all aren't familiar. You can order these about anywhere. These here I made specifically myself just because there are some dimensions I wanted to, specific dimensions I wanted. I made this center hole a lot bigger than what you can get at the bee supply stores. I made my triangle a lot bigger than what you can get and I made these the rims a lot deeper than what you can get they usually come three quarters I think this is an inch and a half so if y'all aren't familiar the design around this how it works you put it on your colony like so 
it has to be with this side up and then any of your honey that you want to harvest is going to go above it and the bees and the honey supers are going to want to go back down back into the brood nest and whatnot and what's going to happen is they're going to hit this screen but they can't come straight down so then they're going to come out these corners of the triangle here and there's just enough room for them to get through there and it's kind of like trapping them out of there because then once they get into the box the lower box and want to go back up they're wanting going to go straight for that hole and hit this screen and they're not going to be able to figure out how to get back up in there so the idea is you leave these on for I think a couple days and by then you know 90% or more of the bees should be cleared out of there if you leave them on too long then the bee, some of the bees may figure out how to get back up there but that's a a tool that I just adopted and used last year for the first time. Really liked it. Uh, in the past, I've used uh, fume boards, and I absolutely hate those things. Mine do not work at all. All they do is shove most of the bees to the bottom of the box. They never fully clear the box. It seems like you have to have the perfect weather conditions for them to work, for me at least. And the weather is always working against you, seems like. With fume boards, it works best if it's a bright, sunny, hot day. And it seems like every time I've tried to get honey with them, it's been cloudy and yeah, whatever. So those things just aggravated me to no end. So I built these escape boards and they worked wonderful. And another, another plus with them is when you break those, those honey boxes off there's usually some burr comb between the boxes which has honey in it and that's gonna spill everywhere and create a mess if you just take it off right then but with these escape boards the bees will actually clean that mess up before they leave the box so then when you come and take that box off there's not any honey oozing everywhere so that's a big upside and to me it's just a lot easier more efficient just a smoother process the downside is you got to make uh, extra trip to your bee yard but I'm all right with that so I think I've talked enough let's get into these colonies and set these boards So the first thing I'm doing this season, I have a lot of, it's what I did when I put my first super on, is here in the middle I had four or five empty combs and then the rest of it I did in foundation. So what I'm seeing is the bees really didn't draw any of the foundation really. They just used the empty combs. So what I'm doing is going through here and taking out any foundations and putting them in a box and setting it to the side and making sure all the supers that I leave here have nine frames, nine extractable frames in the box because I have my extractor is nine frame capacity so that just makes it a smoother and more efficient process when I get in the honey room. I just take them and shake the bees out. This one they drew a little bit. See there's nothing on this side. This side they drew a little bit out. There's just a little bit of nectar. You can kind of see that ring of bees there. To me that's really it's not worth the time and effort of putting it through the extractor, that amount of honey. So I'm just gonna shake the bees off of that. 
And while it's sitting to the side, the bees can rob out that little bit of honey. Now we're into the combs I left. See, and that's full frame of honey. Almost full. They're just starting to cap that. Another full frame. The reason I'm putting escapes in is today is Monday. I put the queen excluders, I shook everybody down and put the queen excluders in. It'll be three weeks on Wednesday. So the reason that three weeks is important is because a lot of these, the queen had laid eggs and brewed up here. And a worker takes 21 days from the egg being laid to them emerging from their cells and you can't have brood in the honey room when you're extracting so you want all that to emerge out and be out of there before you harvest the box so that three week date is important another full frame of honey another And another. See this one, there was a little patch of brood right here. It's emerged and they've backfilled it. So that's what you want to see. And here's about a half a frame. Well, three quarters maybe. And as you can see, most of the honey's capped, so it is ready to be harvested. I have my refractometer to test the moisture in the honey, but if it's capped, it's ready to go. And when it's capped, you can have a little more uncapped to mix with it to bring that moisture content down. So this colony made six good frames of honey. And I would say Five to six frames has probably been the average so far per colony. I got some that made pretty good, but you know, average, probably five to six frames, which is not very good, honestly, but. With the weather and everything, you know, beekeeping's farming, so you gotta Kind of take what, what's given to you and move on. And what I've also been doing is going down in the brood nest and making sure the colonies are queen right in a viable unit. Because here in a few weeks, these bees are liable to be moved to cotton fields or if I can find any, some sunflower fields. So I see eggs and larvae and cat brood. So they are queen ripe. It's not the best pattern. May have to look at replacing her. There's a really good frame of open brood. Yeah, the whole thing's laid up, so yeah, they're plenty viable, plenty of bees. So now, put the excluder back on. And now I'm gonna get one of the honey boxes I brought with me and put it over the excluder. Now being exposed and sitting out on my trailer, it's got a bunch of robber bees in there, but they should filter out. And I have these set up with a two gallon feeder already in there. And that way these colonies are already set up to accept feeding this fall. I won't have to make another trip out to the yard. And now with that 
the honey super replaced and I'm leaving the excluder on there just so I know where the queen's at just in case I want to come back and replace some of them I don't have to look through two boxes I only have to look through one so that's the reason I'm leaving the excluder now our escape board put the triangle down put our honey super on top of that And then when I'm done with everybody, I'll come, I'll go to some colonies with two supers and their top box. I'll take frames out of there and fill this box up with nine. Looks like more of the same story. This one may have, this one probably has less. But this was a, I could tell by the lid this is a 23 queen so this is a colony that got a queen replacement so they were already a little behind they just started building that frame but nothing in there Partial frame. Full frame. Looks full, but it's pretty skinny, so there's not as much honey as there as there could have been. Here's a full frame. Another full frame. All them beautiful cappings are going to be turned into beeswax. Another full frame. And here's a half a frame, maybe less. So these have seven frames that I'm leaving to be extracted, but I think they still made less than this colony. Judging by the population, they're queen right. Main reason I'm checking is the smaller ones that look like they may have swarmed. I'm checking them for queen, queen rightness. And this being a new queen, she shouldn't have swarmed. Yep, all stages of brood. From eggs to kept brood. If the camera wasn't rolling, I wouldn't have even checked them. But just for you guys, show y'all what's going on. It's so now time for their honey box. I don't know, them way pretty close, they may have made about the same. This one looks pretty good. The outside frame is worth keeping and worth extracting. So this one, they're not full, but they certainly have honey. And 
And this one is a good example of the brood. She had brood on most of this frame, good patch of it, and it's all emerged out and they've backfilled all that with nectar and honey. So this cap will have a low, lower moisture content than this, but once it mixes all together, it's gonna be good. And just for the sake of the video, I think I'll test the moisture in that. So this is a refractometer. Put your honey sample on there and then look through here and it tells you the moisture comment, content of your sample. Honey, safe to extract and store under 20%, but it's really best, the quality of the honey is really best at 18% or less. And the less moisture you get, the thicker the honey's gonna be. So I'm gonna get some of this fresh uncapped stuff because it'll be higher in moisture. And then put it on our lens there. Like so. And close the cover, wait about 30 seconds. Make sure there's no air bubbles or anything in there. Now let's read our sample. It really, you use the sunlight to shine through here, through a prism or something, and it gives you a reading. So I'm looking at 18 and a half. And that's probably the very freshest nectar they've brought in. Just because that brood just emerged. Yeah, 18 and a half. So that's barely above the 18 that I mentioned, but it's gonna mix in with all that cap stuff, which is probably, I'm guessing it's probably like 16 or something. So it's gonna be well below the when you average, mix all that together, it's gonna to be well below 18%. And that one does not have an excluder for some reason. I guess I got tired and rum dumb when I was putting them on and maybe forgot about this one. I just skipped over it. There's a beautiful frame of open brood, just starting to be milk brood. Beautiful. So I'd say the queen is most definitely down here. Because there was no brood whatsoever up there. Lots of lifting. I don't need a gym because this is my gym. As you can see, these three we went through, they don't have nine frames in their box. So I'm gonna go over here to those that have two supers and grab the frames out of there to fill these up to nine, kind of make everybody equal. Well, that one's done. There's a ninth one there. Here's eight and nine for here. So there you have it, everybody. All the, the skateboards are set. We're gonna have 26 boxes to strip off. One of them only, after making everybody have nine frames in there, one of them, I was left over with two frames, so that one really don't count. So 25 boxes to strip off. And I don't know, won't know how much they yield until I extract it all, I'm hoping 
I don't know, I'm kind of guesstimating and hoping maybe they'll be 50, 60% full, which would mean every one of them yield maybe 40 pounds, something around in it, something around in there. Not very good, but I think with our area and the way the weather and everything was, I shouldn't complain too much and just take what I can. Another thing I was doing when I went through here when I was queen checking, if they were queenless, then I'd just put something up here on the lid just to kind of flag them. I'm gonna have to come back later and check these again to see if a queen came back and it started laying. And at that time, I'll also bring nukes with me just in case they weren't successful, then I can pop a nuke in there and that'll be back to a functioning unit. So as you can see, the nectar flow is done with all this robbing. If there was even a decent flow on, there wouldn't be near this many bees here. So these are the honey boxes that I brought with me out of my, out of the freezer container that some of y'all seen in a previous video. I'm gonna be using all the honey in there for winter feed. So everything's done and the robbing is terrible. I better get the heck out of here. I'll bring y'all back in a couple of days when we're stripping boxes off. Everybody stripped down. Took me about 21 minutes, according to the camera, and then strapping time. And now I guess the bees are collecting their tax. Taking it back from me. So I better get a move on. And their tax is just as aggravating as when the government does it. Oh lordy, it's hot. It says 86. My phone says 75% humidity. It's 10.30 in the morning, so it dude real heavy. So that adds to the humidity and there's not a breath of wind at all. And then you got Bee jacket, hat. It's bad. So I'm gonna get on down the road. I may take a few back roads and drive a little slow and drive, hopefully, blow a bunch of them bee, robber bees out of there. In the tax collecting. and get on home to the honey room and get these boxes in there. May get some extracted today, I don't know. Need to get some extracted tomorrow and bottled for sure. Tomorrow's Friday, go to markets on a Saturday. Get some of this wildflower honey out to the public. So, thank y'all for watching especially if y'all hung around to the end here. 
gonna have more videos on honey extraction and whatnot. I gotta do four more rounds of this, what I'm doing here, to get it all done. So, see y'all on the next one.